Uh, this story is, is tragically hilarious. So I, I uh, this came up on Left Voice, and uh, and I was a little surprised seeing it, and there's no other real, like, corporate news didn't even cover this, even though it sounds like something that corporate news would cover, right? Um, the LAPD confiscated a bunch of fireworks in, in this neighborhood, you know, saying that they trafficked it from across state lines, things of that sort. And, uh, you know, that's fine. But honestly, like, who cares? Is this the, is this the most important thing that, that the cops could have been doing? Is, is busting up, like, a fireworks joint of people that are like, yeah, we brought this stuff from across the, so that some people can participate in this holiday. I'm, I, you know, I, I'm at a point now where, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to love fireworks. We used to set them off for Diwali all the time. That was when I would see fireworks. And then when I came here, there was one year where the temple celebrated Diwali and like everybody got sparklers and they would light off these fireworks and there'd be this big display and everything like that. And then after that, they just weren't able to get permits to do it. So, you know, so now it's like they have the little sparkler parties and stuff like that. And, that, and that's about as much as we can do for Diwali. But Fourth of July, you know, is... Like everybody wants fireworks all the time, so so maybe they they I I don't know the details of what actually happened with this with with the trafficking of the fireworks, but also like who really gives a shit, you know? Like who cares? Maybe they were trying to bring some joy to the neighborhood. Yeah, I I I don't particularly like fireworks going off because I have a lot of friends that are veterans, and they've talked about like yeah, it triggers PTSD stuff. Pets don't like it. Um, you know, so I, I tend to, at this point, I'm like, I can do without them. Or if I am going to, you know, not that I, that I would, I would, you know, if there's a veteran in my neighborhood that I know about just to go knock on their door and be like, Hey, you know, we're, we're going to light off fireworks. Are you cool with that? You know, if not, we can just do them sometime else or at a different location, something like that. Just have some kindness, you know, in celebrating your hypernationalism. But I guess hypernationalism in and of itself doesn't particularly have a lot of kindness associated with it. Anyway, uh, so instead of taking it to a safe place to dispose of it or, or to just put it in an evidence lockup, uh, they called the media and they wanted to show off their new toy, which was this bomb defusing truck that they had. And so they set off the fireworks in this bomb defusing truck to be like, look how great this thing is. And it blew up. Uh, it didn't work. And it like damaged a bunch of cars. 17 people got injured. Then, you know, the neighborhood could have been uh, burnt. We could have had another a move situation, which happened in Philadelphia back in the 80s, where this entire you know, black neighborhood got burnt down because the cops were at war with uh, with with a bunch of black environmentalists, black anti-capitalist environmentalists, you know. And you got to imagine like this thing, they called them specifically to be like, look at this new toy we have. Look how awesome it is. Like we busted this fireworks ring and fucking we're, now we're going to show you how we can dispose of this stuff. What if that had been an actual bomb? And And this happened. What would, what would be the LAPD's response? I mean, even then, it took them a while to, like, respond to this thing. And their response was basically, like, we're going to look into what happened. What do you mean you're going to look into what happened? A bunch of fucking officers decided to showboat. That's not part of your job. So here's here's something that uh, I think is interesting to point out, too, in, in terms of like how cops control narratives, um, because that's what's going to happen with this kind of story is the cops are going to control the narrative for this. So. I got this from Rad Indie Media, which is and uh, which is a great site you should go check out. But it's a free, th a free thought project article that they shared uh, where Thomas Nolan, who is who's a cop that was on the force for 27 years, 
uh, said he wasn't a good beat cop, so he but he could write police reports. So like a bunch of people would constantly come up and and say, "Hey, write these police reports." Um, so he says he would routinely advise his subordinates to incorporate a short list of buzzwords in their reports to frame themselves as a hero and the suspect who might have been injured or killed out as the aggressor. Uh, those use of force reports ultimately were chock full of words like resist, overcome, vigorous, violent, subdue, fear, and attack. Nolan said even if they were exaggerations. So, you know, when you hear words like, oh, they were resisting or violence or there was fear or I was trying to subdue them, it's just a cover for uh, explicit police violence, over-the-top brutality. This is where this is the other thing that he says, right? He says, I thought these cops were doing the right thing and catching bad guys and oftentimes did it in ways that might not pass legal muster. And I got them over the hurdle. I thought that that was something that my that was my contribution and my necessary contribution. So, again, you know, I got to make them look like heroes. I got to make them look good. And, you know, the assumption again, and this is the assumption that a lot of people make and a lot of conservative cops end up uh, or not conservative cops but just conservative people make about cops is that anybody that gets apprehended anybody that gets pulled over is automatically a bad guy because in society we're we're trained to think that cops are are good people they're always good guys they're always trying to do the right thing and that's how they operate but that's never the that's never the truth i mean this LA, LAPD case is the same thing it's like you you try to showboat what are they going to do how are they going to pin it on 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 the you know the guys that were f trafficking fireworks which again in the grand scheme of thing who really gives a shit this is like going to prison for for having some weed on you who really gives a shit they had an ounce of marijuana on them and you put them in prison for 10 years go fuck yourself who really gives a shit So then his last statement in this article, and it's a short article, so if you want to go read it, I would recommend you, you know, check it out. It's not that long. Um, it says, what we've seen unfold over the years since videos have become just everyday ubiquitous depictions of police interactions with the public is that there's pretty solid evidence that the police have misrepresented and mischaracterized incidents they're involved in. The recordings give substance to the skepticism that many people now have about police and their version of events. But even those videos are often, you know, people kind of see whatever they want to see in those videos. Um, you know, like, there are people that watch those videos and go, ah, ah that did you see that shoulder twitch from that guy? That that was an aggressive, that's a fast twitch. That's the, you know, and they come up with these excuses of like, it's like a shoulder twitch. You went by a shoulder twitch, and that somehow said that he deserved to get shot 18 times. Like, what are you talking about? You know, like it's because people can't get over their biases. They look at these videos and they go, There the cops have to be a good guy. There has to be a reason why they did it. And they justify police brutality when really the reason why this police brutality happened is because fucking cops are racist. That's what they are. The system is racist. The system teaches them that these people are the enemy. Everybody that's not wearing a badge and a gun is your fucking enemy. That's how the system operates. And they can't get over that. Now, like I said, the LAPD is claiming that they're going to investigate it, but those reports, if those reports even come out, if the story's even talked about, um, we'll have flowered language of like, well, there were these resistors and we had to get rid of this so that we could make an example and the cops were using their better judge, you know, this, that, and the third, and there was a test done. Well, well, none of that matters. You still fucking blew up a neighborhood. You injured 17 people, destroyed people's cars. Are you going to pay for that? Are you going to cover these people's medical expenses? Because you should. You're responsible for them getting hurt. That wasn't collateral damage. That wasn't a, 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 a high-speed car chase. There wasn't a hostage situation. This wasn't the movies. They had no reason to do that. And then, again, it kind of adds to the point of, like, 
this is why we talk about defunding the police. They don't need toys like this. The bomb disposal, the you know, uh, bomb disposal unit, uh, whatever the explosives unit, that should be a separate thing. And yeah, it's important to have something like that just in case. I get it, but that's not part that that that's a, that should be a separate thing. That should be a part of the police budget. And there's going to be a media blackout on this too. Nobody else is going to be talking about this shit. Like I said, I got it off of Left Voice, so. Yeah. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Zuzovic says reckless endangerment. Arrest these cops for threatening to burn down the neighborhood. They're terrorists. Agreed. Uh, that's what they do to us. So fuck them. Yeah. Mandatory three years hard labor and make sure uh, they own the government 100K when they get out. <laughs> yeah, it's completely ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. I agree. I think these cops should be off the force, reckless endangerment, uh, you know, putting people's lives in danger. These people should be these should, people should be in prison. They should not be allowed to be out there in the community making decisions like this. Um, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And, uh, and you guys help keep this, uh, keep, keep this, this train a-moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.